Good greetings and salutations, you beautiful individuals. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you for an absolutely jam packed weekend recap. And we're living in the timeline of the LCS that probably nobody was really talking about as a possibility at the start of the weekend. And that is Team Liquid going on a whole little bit of a run, six and one as underdogs against not one, but two of the top teams in the LCS taking home the finals trophy in spring 3-1 against FlyQuest. And first and foremost, finals in the LCS studio, ain't it? I forgot it was even finals, Mark. I will give them credit. They did about as much as possible that you could do to type up a in-studio type of final situation. But yes, we. Uh, th this is one of those ones where I think this is a miss. You got to find it in the budget. You got to squeeze some lemons somewhere else, whatever type of situation. Get back to the live events on the road for this type of situation, this type of magnitude of an event. Because you know what? The way that Team Liquid played deserved to be in front of arena level fans and that type of situation because they absolutely were the mega stars of the weekend. Title number six for Impact. It, my man looked like he won week six of the regular season to go two and zero. And it's insane to go the gap that we have been in the championships for Impact and look at the scene of the top lane in the LCS and still argue he's maybe it's still the top option that you could be rolling through You're thinking yes, it after these two series especially after these two series yes there might be more flashy options there might be more uh, you know high powered options out there but that stability that consistency that you are able to get and even with a little you know maybe dibble dabble of a mediocre twisted fate in there as well we do get to see impact get another lcs chip but you see APA ride the trio of Aurelian Soul, Ziggs, and Talia. That was pretty much his champion pool throughout this playoff run, but he looks pretty damn good on all three of those champions. And Jensen, who was one of the standout guys the whole playoffs for FlyQuest, stuck on any duty pretty much the whole series. Oh, man, and, and that, that can't feel good to get bodied by Mr. APA. It's supposed to be bodied by Jensen, not APA. No one had that one. And then you got to the read the all chat, too. Oh. oh, the extra salt in the wound from Mr. APA, LCS champion APA. We need to remind you, and you know, for all you haters out there, as well as Mr. Summit, uh, making sure and making getting that one checked off for Mr. APA. But if you're going to disrespect him and say, okay, we're leaving what we know is that established champion pool for you up. He's going to execute on those champions. We saw that throughout, throughout it. I think that's the one thing that is kind of that good or bad in this situation for Team Liquid. You can go in the good and everything that has happened and everything right for this roster. I think one of the other big things to talk about is Jan's improvement and growth over this split to develop into a more reliable damage threat in that bottom lane for this team. You can also look at that downside and you can say APA was not tested pretty much throughout this entirety of the split or didn't show growth the entirety of this split on the existing champion pool that he has. The Aurelian Soul, the Ziggs, the Talia, those were all things that were there last year that we knew that he was proficient on. Good to see it checked in through and these are all important and you know, you have all these other professional players with staple picks for them as well. This is one of those situations where we are protecting in a per, uh, for a future MSI type of situation where you are going to get squeezed in your champion pool. People are going to identify, you know what? Maybe not spend all of our bands just on meta. Maybe we can target a specific player, a specific avenue for this team and cripple them in that fashion. That's the concern for Team Liquid, even with the, the happiness and success of an LCS champion. You know guys like Chovy and Knight are shaking in their boots watching the Ziggs APA performances coming through. But the biggest change for Team Liquid 100% uh, from playoffs versus the regular season was their play style. They went from the second lowest kills per game in the regular season to more than three kills more per game than anyone else in the LCS. You heard FlyQuest players before this series talking about in scrims. Team Liquid's trying to play like an LPL team. They're just running around, fighting, having skirmishes everywhere possible, and both Cloud9 and FlyQuest honestly weren't up to the task to compete with it. 
And I think a big part of that deserves uh, the praise for that deserves to go to the TL coaching staff, specifically for me, Mr. Spawn, who has been here for so long with the Team Liquid Academy situation. Multiple different earned, roles within the organization. And has earned his way all the way up the totem pole to now being the boss of this LCS team and running it through as that head coach. He's talked about bringing in LPL, LCK influences into what they're doing. And as you mentioned, Team Spawn, screaming them and saying they're looking and having aggression just like an LPL squad and you saw that out there on the rift the shift the change for how these how these players wanted to play someone like umpty in the jungle i think really found another level for this team liquid team throughout this playoff run really was a a, a great culmination peak here for team liquid i mean umpty played his basically six best games on Team Liquid in back-to-back series. And how can you not feel happy for the guy who was so emotional going from Jin Air to Freddie Breon and then his first split in the LCS? I could have been winning titles if I just came to NA before. Oh, no. <laughs> that can't be the way that we're painting the story for Mr. Umpty. But yeah, what an incredible story that is just in the first round. Number one. This was a move that was rumored to be possibly happening last year. It just doesn't go through. You have Piosic, everything else. Another year on Freddie Breon, another disappointing year on Freddie Breon at the end of the day. For Umpty comes over, gets this type of run in the sun with Team Liquid, gets to feel like a champion. And you know what? It's going to get to see a bunch of his old LCK friends over at MSI now. There's different kinds of tears for Cloud9 fans because... Back-to-back 0-3 series losses that they had no business even picking up a game in. They were not competitive for this super team. Not going to MSI, not being in finals, and just completely fizzling out in playoffs. This is about as disappointing an end as it could be. For what this roster was assembled to be, what their goal was to accomplish, not getting one of the two spots. It didn't have to be, oh, you got to be that number one locked in. You could have had that second seed and there still would have been room to work with not getting one of those seeds whatsoever and fizzling out in the fashion that you mentioned those back to back 3-0 situations. That is unacceptable from this Cloud9 roster. And it does beg the question of what changes are going to be made because right now, unacceptable to move forward into summer with this roster in the same iteration once again yes this is not going oh yeah we'll get rid of jojo pyun he wasn't working it doesn't work quite like that but the immediate reaction and one of the things that does need to be identified here was this was supposed to be the split that fudge established himself once again as the unquestionable top option in the top lane for the lcs did he improve did he have some bounce back sure was it enough to claim that top spot to be a difference maker for cloud nine on a regular occasion not even close my man was gapped by grandpa impact and a bwipo that came out of retirement in that situation never mind challenged by your boys 100 100 100 thieves general sniper coming up i mean he was a difference maker it was just the not kind of difference you were hoping for fudge to be making so yeah we'll see if this roster comes back, but huge disappointment to end the split for the Cloud9 super team. Maybe not Colin, D plus Kia, or KT Rulster super teams, but we know these guys always deliver four incredible back and forth exciting games culminating in what I'm calling a perfect game performance. Get those Void Grubs heralds out of here. No kills, no dragons, no turrets. No Barons. D plus Kia absolutely showing up. The story of this whole series was Lucid is right up there with Canyon in terms of the best smite key in the LCK. Sure, I'm ready to say that throughout the whole series, but absolutely in some crucial moments, yes, making sure that it does happen for D plus Kia. This was a brawl. This was two teams that were almost at that equal type of level, really duking it out throughout this series, trying to find that edge. And ultimately, that edge is in the favor of D plus Kia, that perfect game five. They find the miraculous silver scrapes to get it done in that one that you mentioned. And the one thing that we were heading into this series was gonna be the way that either it went for both these teams. One team was going to get sharper at this point from fighting each other, move on to that next stage, facing that uphill challenge of the rest of the LCK ahead of them. 
The other one is going to get ousted at this early point, this one reminder of where you need to finish in the standings in order to get yourself that buy into that lower bracket situation of the LCK. Neither of these teams had that luxury. This is the situation now where KT finds it on a short spring split and DK continuing on to take those lessons, take that sharpening here from that head to head. And it felt like this series, Showmaker, played a bunch of Azir games, looked like he was just not enjoying life. I don't know if he's a full-fledged Azir enjoyer like some other mid laners across the globe, but then he seemed to be born anew when he gets to have a Silas counter pick in game five against the Azir. He had some insane ultis to steal in this game, but from the very get-go, he was absolutely locked in on that Silas. I, without question, one of the top five Silas players of all time. No, there's, I don't even need to think about it. I'll throw Caps onto that list. I'll throw Faker in there as well, and I'll let you pick another two to, to round it out. But you best believe that you're finding Mr. Showmaker in there on the Silas, the type of moves that he gets to express, the fun that you see in his face and how engaged he is in the game. That's when you know it's prime Showmaker and you're in some danger because, yes, sir, he, he's going to make the silly moves happen. I'm not ready to say that D-plus has a chance against Gen G, who they're matching up against in the next round, but Lucid continues from that Gen G series to have the best stretch he's had in his rookie split so far, peaking at the perfect time. Showmaker, a little bit rejuvenated, as I mentioned, with that Silas and playing something that isn't Azir. And Aiming had a much better series. Yes, he had a couple moments uh, where he got caught out a little bit. But still, he was much more that reliable guy that you could carry on uh, or be the carry 35 minutes into this game. And if he's reliable, then you're going to have a series. That's the way it's going to look out in this type of one, the way things have played out. Yes, I know Gen G is going to be that big demon that you're waiting to face up against. I think that this is absolutely that D-plus team that can find a way to steal a game. Can they steal two? Can they steal another one to get that full series? Not ready to make that type of push type of situation right now. But again, I want to keep that eye on the future for D plus Kia. Even though you got that upset against KT, you're still looking for experience. You're still building up Lucid as that player to replace Canyon. Now he's facing off against Canyon in a playoff series. This is another level to learn from as well. Yeah, you know, both of those junglers are going to be wanting to prove that uh, their respective teams made the right call going with them. But either way, we've got the checkpoint. It's a bonus life now for D+. They have the luxury of that loser's bracket. It's just, you know, the other three squads are going to be <laughs> favorites against them in pretty much any matchup. But still, happy to see a level up from them in this KT series. We got a bit of a level up uh, from G2 Esports from what we were seeing at the end of the regular season. They had absolutely no business winning 2-0 against Mad Lions Koi, especially that second game, if not for one little whoopsie moment with a 5-0 Zaya for Supa. We're probably talking about at least a game three in this series. And that's a learning moment for Supa. You, you categorize that one, you file it away into the back of the brain and any type of situation where you get somewhere close to that same type of request, you pull that file out and you read it and you remember what happened and what not to do in these situations. Thank you for the lesson, G2. And yes, thank you, G2. More or less even with a series that probably could have gone a little bit further, still one where I think G2 in that driver's seat more so compared to Madeline's Koi. It's a blip, is what we're seeing. It wasn't the, this continued slump, continued slide for G2. It was going to be just a little speed bump, and things are going to continue on here so far in the LEC playoffs. And listen, they win this series 2-0 with uh, Mickey borderline inting in a couple of these games. Yikes, still not in the finest form. I'm, I'm still saying he's in a bit of a slump uh, over the last couple of weeks, but this was really about especially again in that second game the combo of twisted fate for broken blade and the talia performances for caps absolutely lethal they were picking off mad players left right and center uh, uh, we want to we just talked about caps being in uh, the silas list he might be on that talia list as well because you talk about a guy taking the full advantage of what that kit offers just at the base and then you take the movement aspect of Talia and you start letting this dude loose all around Summoner's Rift at an ex, ex, you know, expanded speed. Not a good recipe for the enemy team. Tell you that much. 
yeah, and you know the I'm always calling for Mirwin to play some spicier stuff, but the Varus top it, it, it didn't do anything. It, it fed uh, some kills. We'll give we'll give BB his credit for this type of matchup and what 100%. he was able to do in this one. I think he has been a, a little bit up and down, of course, alongside G2. This split and, and testing out the waters of some different things in the top side. The Twisted Fate has looked more comfortable, let's just say, than some of the other options. So while we're by the time we're doing this video, you know, we already got the winner brackets getting going in the LEC. But uh, first, quick roundup from what you got over the weekend. First, the business as usual. Fnatic versus Giant X was probably the biggest mismatch on paper. It was pretty much business as usual, 2-0. Fnatic, they never do anything cleanly. It's always chaos. That seems to be where they thrive, but it was a 2-0 nonetheless. And I leave this series saying, get Jackie's a better team. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, that was more or less the first initial reaction to what we saw from Giant X this year was, oh, Jackie's is something special. And then, oh, this is not the environment. This is not the situation that I want for this guy to succeed at the maximum level. That's got to be the takeaway here. You're one of those ones. Yes, this was that mismatch. There's no other way to, to, to describe it more accurately than as you did with this one for Fnatic. They put it out out there on the Rift. They made sure that that difference was felt there right away. And as you said, Jackie's is that takeaway for Giant X. I still think that lone bright spot that we see from them, really. Even more one-sided was the BDS Team Heretic series. And I got zero faith in Team Heretics going forward in that loser's bracket because they didn't do anything in this series. They just showed up to the lobby and waited to lose until the series was over. Just about as passive as you can look in a series right there type of one one of them you know what you felt maybe okay you got to give at least a half credit point to bds for the effort that they brought to the rift that day but there wasn't going to be much necessary to separate yourself from team heretics and what we got that was about as lame duck as you could have had and i don't know if that's as far as on the individual players and their preparation or if that's on the organization and the preparation and focus that was ahead of this matchup but that has got to change and that's got to change in time for this next weekend yeah and i don't know what you change if you're that squad because so many veterans they looked like they had no idea how to play the game which was a little bit uh strange seeing you know guys like yankos and trimby who are some of the most vocal macro oriented guys that we've seen it was a bit bizarre to see them completely rolling over uh vitality we got back-to-back -back performances from their carries Carzi absolutely popping off on the Zaya in game two, followed by Viteo with a clean chase performance, both of them going back to back, double digit kill games. And back to more, maybe more familiarity. And when we're talking about Vitality, talking about players like Viteo, like Karzi, because a lot of the story, this split for Vitality, believe it or not, has actually been about Photon up in the top side and what he's been able to do and how he has grown as a player. I think that we saw that in this series as well, still an underlying kind of storyline keeping through. But as as you mentioned before, really was the shining stars in Vitao and Karzi popping off, generating the big numbers for the squad. Vitality team is, is picking up that speed, picking up that momentum to be one of the teams that is going to knock on that door for the established order of Fnatic and G2. And they can go back and forth with who the best Jace on the team is between Photon and Viteo. <laughs> you got both of them looking pretty damn good on the pick uh, throughout this series. Week one or round one of LPL playoffs. We had to wait until Sunday, the second half of action uh, on the weekend for things to kick off. But immediately get a five-game banger between Weibo and Invictus Gaming. And it ain't the shy but it's the Weibo Gaming top laners stealing the show in Game 5. ZDZ on the Aatrox. Didn't matter if it was solo kill, a team fight, a small skirmish. He absolutely hard carried Weibo in this Game 5. I'm not going to do anything crazy like say, oh, and he looked just like... No, he did not look just like the Shy on the Aatrox. That would be very unfair to put that through, but he certainly came through in the clutch for Weibo Gaming with a very good, very decisive performance on that Aatrox in the game five. This was a, a wonderful series to start off the LPL playoffs as we laid out what was gonna be kind of this territory, this type of room. I think for IG, 
this is ultimately where things were more or less going to end up for them at this split. Still an improvement over the past couple of splits for them. So good tr trending. You come in with a five game losing streak. You're probably not feeling too hot about yourselves. No, the performance wasn't going to be there at the end type of thing. Realizing your maximum run had reached its end here in the L LPL this spring split, but still upward trajectory at the very least for them moving towards summer. And for Weibo, you keep this p project alive at this point right now with what you're going on with this lineup. I think that this was overall a series where you could look at Light, you could look at Xiaohu for what they did in this series, where their damage was and, and what they were able to do and were important in getting it to that game five, where I think it really is more so it is ZDZ making a big difference on that Aatrox, making some crucial plays in the team fights happen for the team. But Weibo keeping it rolling, eliminating one of the dark horse possibilities that were remaining in the at the opening round of playoffs. And now you need a level up from everybody not named ZDZ because in classic LPL fashion, it levels up quickly. You're going from a team that's a five-game losing streak to a squad that has a five-game winning streak coming in in LNG in their next matchup. Um, isn't it perfect balanced as all, as everything should be just in the LPL teetering right on it. Five game lose streak, five game win streak right on up. And yes, this is, I think, even more heat than just a regular five game win streak, which is already substantial heat for a team to be bringing in when you've got names like Scout and Gala driving that heat, driving that engine for this team. That's where you're scared of them in a best of series. And listen, there's... There's no stopping this LPL train now that even though it started a bit late on the weekend, right through basically to the start of next week, you got playoff games every single day. Ooh, better show up, get that popcorn, get a, get a box of popcorn, not just one bag of popcorn, get that box because you're going to be making a couple of them throughout this cinema run of the LPL playoff. Which absolute cinema is what LPL matches are. Maybe not this round. Maybe we got to wait until the BLGs and TESs are playing before you feel like you need to be watching these matches in IMAX. But it's going to level up real quick in the LPL. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip.